ان الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فما يهدي ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تسالون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ما بعد فنا استك الحديث كتاب الله وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله واهلها في النار وعياذا بالله واياكم من النار ايها الاحبه في الله i thought it would be important for us to study and go through the important book al usul thalatha the three fundamental principles uh written by sheikh al imam muhammad suleiman at tamimi otherwise known as muhammad ibn abd wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala the mujaddid and the way that we'll deal with this treaties is we'll study it and be very concise and brief just bring it about some of the benefits and going through the text and with as minimal usage of arabic as possible uh except you know certain aspects of the text or ayat or hadith or perhaps some of the aqwal of the salaf or the ulama when necessary but we'll try to make our slew very brief and make them short lessons hopefully full of benefit and may allah azza wa jal bless us with ilm nafia wa rizqan tayyiba wa amalan mutaqabbila the sheikh began his treaties he said i'lam rahimakallah annahu yajibu alayna ta'allum arba masail al ula al ilm he said no after saying bismillah ar rahman ar rahim in the name of allah the most gracious most merciful no may allah have mercy upon you that we must learn for basic matters and then he said al ula al ilm he said the first thing is knowledge then he defined what he meant by knowledge al ula al ilm huwa ma'rifat allah wa ma'rifat an nabi wa ma'rifat din al islam bi adilla he said knowledge which is to know allah his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the religion of islam with the supportive evidences with din al islam be adilla the the religion of islam with the supportive evidences with the evidences for what you're saying so he began he said first is knowledge and he defined what knowledge is he said which is to know allah and knowing allah that includes knowing allah azza wa jalla by his uh tawhid urububiyya tawhid al uluhiyya tawhid al asma'i wa sifat by knowing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believing in his lordship his rububiyya and that he's the creator of the heavens and earth and as he's a provider and sustainer and that he which necessitates worshiping him in him alone and let me repeat that So knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's lordship that he a knowing rububiyyah the ulama you always hear them say this that this necessitates yastalzimu tawhid al-uluhiyah ar-rububiyyah yastalzimu tawhid al-uluhiyah that rububiyyah the lordship of Allah azza wa jalla knowing and realizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the heavens and earth the only one in worship worthy of worship then this necessitates that all ibadah goes to him which is tawhid al uluhiyya or tawhid al ibadah as some of the ulama refer to it as meaning that this is to single out allah uh, azza wa jalla alone for worship 
directing any and all forms of ibadah. And we'll talk about the types of ibadah or some types of ibadah that Sheikh Muhammad ibn al Wahhab talks about in his treatise, Rahmatullah alayh, when the time comes. Uh, and Tawheed al Asma'i wa Sifat and the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as Ahlul Sunnati wa Jama'ah, we believe and we affirm what Allah affirms about Himself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And to Allah belong the best names. So invoke Him by them. And leave those who practice deviation concerning His names. They will be recompensed, recompensed for what they have been doing. Surah Al Araf. So in this ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms that to Allah belongs the best names. And he affirms Tawheed al-Ibadah. So invoke him by them. Because this is, as we're going to study, the Prophet sallallahu said, dua hui ibadah. That dua, supplication, is worship. And that is affirming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the exalted, has described himself in his book and by the tongue of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam as sublime, supreme, and lofty. The Quran is full of proofs relevant to the loftiness of Allah. Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, believe in and confirm all of the attributes of Allah without distorting their meaning. And that Allah is above his seven heavens, above his arsh, and separated from his creatures, and his creatures are separated from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is, very briefly, the belief of Ahlul Sunnati wa Jama'ah regarding Allah Azza wa Jal, in, in a very concise way, that we affirm what Allah affirms about himself in the Quran. And we affirm what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam affirms about him in the authentic sunnah. And we negate what Allah Azza wa Jal says about himself in the Quran, in any naqs or any aib, anything that is uh, blameworthy and unpraiseworthy, any attributes that are uh, similar to his creation or any attributes which have a negative connotation, we negate that about our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only one worthy of worship. And likewise, we negate whatever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam negated in his authentic sunnah, salawatu rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi. Ahabatifillah, that's very important that we understand that. So the Imam said, No, may Allah have mercy upon you. And again, this is the asloob of Ahl al is that they, uh, when they, uh, many of the Salaf, you'll find those, those who, who wrote books, that you'll find that they made dua for those people who uh, were in attendance. And those people who they were teaching through their books, meaning those people who would read their books, would find these types of dua. No, may Allah have mercy upon you. Supplicating for the mercy that, that the individual who is listening would receive mercy from Allah Azza wa Jal. This is why we try to make our durus full of these, ahabatifillah, those who are beloved. To me, for the sake of Allah, my brothers, my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam. Because what this does is it opens the heart of the one listening to accept from the one who is teaching. And this was the asloob of the salaf of this ummah. Rahimahumullah jami'an. So he said, I'lam rahimahullah innahu yajibu alayna ta'allam arba masail al-ula al-ilm wa huwa ma'rufat Allah. And it is knowing Allah. Wa ma'rufat al-nabi. And knowing his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That means knowing who the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is. And knowing something about his sunnah, alayhi salatu wa salam. And following his sunnah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the religion of Islam with the support of evidence. That you need to know your deen with textual evidence. Doesn't mean everyone has to be a hafiz. And everybody has to memorize uh, the Quran or memorize the sunnah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But you need to know some basic uh, issues like about Tawheed and memorize basic verses that illustrate that for you. Not for the sake of argument and debate, but for the sake of being grounded in your religion. That you know 
by the textual proofs. And I'm going to give you a real live example that happened to me this very day. And I live in Saudi Arabia right now. And I was shocked. I met for the first time uh, basically what you would say an agnostic or an atheist Saudi today at my, my place of employment. A man came up to me. I didn't know him. He sees me regularly. And he said, may I speak to you? And I said, no problem. I put my book aside because he saw I was reading an Arabic book. So he, he, he uh, invited himself to or, or asked to converse with me. And he said, what? He said, I have doubt that Allah exists. And he said, I, uh, I believe in science. I believe in science. And so then we had a discussion and... I said, and he kept saying, give me proof, give me proof. I said, well, the proof is in the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his, uh, these, these signs, koniyya, because I know he didn't believe in the signs, shari'ya, because as the ulama uh, state that the signs of Allah or the ayat of Allah azza wa jal are of two types, ayat koniyya wa ayat shari'ya. Ayat koniyya meaning ayat or verses or signs in the creation. So the fact that I'm able to speak, this is a sign, this is one of Allah's signs that he has given some of his creatures speech where other creatures don't really have the ability to speak, although they communicate in their own way. Lions speak with lions in with roars and and growls and this and so forth and so on. Ants communicate between themselves and humans have their own language. All of this is from the majesty of our Lord, just that all these creatures can communicate. And even more recently, it has come to uh, I, I was listening to some programs and they were discussing about how trees actually have a form of communication and they and the way in which they grow and, and, and so forth, their roots grow. And this is amazing. This only, for me, affirms that Allah Azza wa Jal is the creator of the heavens and earth and that he exists. But for someone else, they'll say, no, this isn't proof. Because this can be just science, according to them, or Mother Nature, or whatever they claim. The point of mentioning this, Ahabit Tafillah, is due to this. This individual has been raised in a society of Tawheed. You won't find a place on the earth like Saudi Arabia. And I've traveled and I've seen and nothing, no comparison in any Muslim country that I've ever seen from an Arab to non-Arab countries. There is no comparison. And the ones that I haven't seen, I have no doubt that they don't compare as far as the emphasis on Tawheed, regardless of whether practice, regardless of manners are like this and such and such. But the point is Tawheed is well grounded in the society. For, so, for someone to come out uh, uh, with this kind of, uh, this to be an atheist with all those the hujja has been established upon they have no excuse a person like this is a mulhid is a atheist zandik heretic and so this is the point that I wanted to mention is that knowing Islam be adillah that if you know your religion with adillah then it makes it less likely the shaitan will be able to overcome you You'll have more tools to fight the shayateen from amongst jinn and mankind because al-ilm huwa silah. That knowledge is a sword, as the Salaf used to say. Al-ilm huwa silah. Knowledge is a sword or a weapon. And as Ibn al-Qayyim vividly describes in one of his books, that the, the one who has knowledge, it's like he's using his sword to cut off the heads and he was very descriptive, cut off the heads of doubts and shubahat and shahawat or, or shubahat that, that this one is like slashing away at the doubts because he is grounded in ilm. And that's the beauty of knowledge, of having really solid knowledge of kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you can deal with those shubahat. Like not just have a discussion, but you can slice the head off the shubahat, of those doubts that people bring. They want to talk about the authenticity of hadith. They want to talk about Abu Huraira. They want to talk about why they believe Shiaism is 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 something authentic and, and should, should be in place of the sunnah or this and this and this. You can cut the heads right off those shubahat, those doubtful, wicked forms and claims based on batil, you can 
belittle those arguments and destroy them. With what? With knowledge of Kitab Allah, with Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Man salaka tariqan yal talmasahu bihi alman sahla Allahu lahu tariqan al jannah." Whoever traverses the path of Jannah, then Allah will make easy for him the path of Paradise. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Man yurad Allahu bihi khairan yafqo fadin." Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the religion. And that's the point of what we're talking about. That's fiqh fi deen. Fiqh fi deen, religion. Uh, uh, as, as Imam Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab said, Al-ilm huwa ma'rufat Allah, ma'rufat al-Nabi, wa ma'rufat al-Deen al-Islam bi adilla And having knowledge of the religion of Islam with the textual proofs. And that's fiqh fi deen. And that will help you practice your deen and understand your deen and deal with the shubahat that people try to bring against your religion. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from the shubahat wa shahwat wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.